separate for a second. Now, look, we had a little accident. It's not a big problem. Just pick up your laundry, Wally. We'll turn over the wagon, shake hands. Everything will be fine, all right? Come on, you guys. Help me pick up that wagon. That's better. Take this. Turn it over. Turn it over. Watch that wheel. All right. That's better. Clear the street. We got a stagecoach coming any time now. Excuse me, sir. Hmm? Where might I find the mounter's office? What's wrong? Can't you read? Oh. Where's Corporal Bennett? Well, he ain't here right now. What's your business? My name is Harrison Bennett. My son is Corporal Bennett. Someone here you'll want to meet. Marie's a doctor here. Ever seen a better looking one? Uh, if your son had told us you were coming, we would have set up a real welcome for you. He doesn't know. Uh, Marie, uh, this here's been uh, Clive's father, Dr. Marie Dumont. What a surprise. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Adam? Is there some place suitable around here I can find accommodation? Well, seeing as the uh, boarding house is full, saloon's the best we got. Monsieur Bennett, it would be a privilege for me to have you as my guest in my home. Thank you, no. I don't think it appropriate I should stay in the house of a young woman that I do not know. This is the frontier. The rules of etiquette are somewhat uh, different here. So I've noticed. I will be obliged if you would convey to my son that I'll be at the saloon. Well, you can uh, tell him yourself. Come on, Vermet, let's go. Clive. Yes, I've got them over at the livery stable. Oh, Angus will be so relieved. They're all we have. Those cattle are a rare breed, Miss McPherson. Angus brought them all the way from Scotland. Could you hold them till tomorrow? Angus is bringing the hay in today. I could bring them over uh, this afternoon. Thank you, Corporal. Boys will be needing your privacy. 
never. Did you find a place to stay? Yes, in the saloon. Well, uh, I'll be over to see you later. I have to bring these animals back. Clive, do you have to do that now? I have come such a long way. And I know why you've come. And the answer's still no. Son, you're wasting yourself out here. Haven't you finished your rebellion? You still don't understand, do you? This is my life now. Excuse me, I have to get McPherson his cattle. But surely... Howdy. You settling in all right? Thank you, yes. Has Clive returned? About a half hour ago. Fell dead asleep. I see. Uh, look, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but uh, you two don't get along, do you? He doesn't get along with me. We both want different things. I want him to leave here. Well, uh, why would you want that? Because I'm an old man, and I want him to take my place at the pulpit. Well, I can't think of a more noble calling than being a preacher, but it ain't for everyone. Maybe it ain't for your son, neither. Thank you, Mr. Craddock, but I'll decide that. He is a good lawman, sir. Even if sometimes he thinks too much before he acts, must be all that education and stuff. He's wasting himself here. My son is the man to take over my congregation. Since they're still avoiding me, could you give this to him tomorrow? What's that? A chessboard. Clive and I used to play a lot. Well, it's kind of like checkers, ain't it? <laughs> Not exactly. Shall I show you? Be my pleasure. I don't know why you deserve this. But here's your breakfast. Any idea what's wrong with him, Marie? This man is very sick, but I'm not sure what from. You happen to know if uh, he butchered one of McPherson's cows, Clive? Yes, he did. And that'd be anthrax. Seen enough of it in Texas. He could pull through, but McPherson's animals won't. You're gonna have to kill the cattle to keep it from spreading. All right. Meet me at the stable. Angus, Corporal Bennett, I'm much obliged to you. We have to uh, take a look at your animals. What's wrong? The man who stole them? He's very sick. <laughs> Stealing my cattle, he deserves it. But there's nothing wrong with my cows. Mr. McPherson, we must look at them. was another one. Ah, she's never around. I call her the happy wanderer. McPherson, we 
have to destroy this animal. And the rest of them. No. This one will contaminate the rest of the herd. No, the you touch them. You get out of here. Both here. McPherson, listen to reason. Get out of here now. Go, Marie. idea that my son has to use these weapons abhorrent. Yeah, well, you should be thankful he's got one of these here Winchesters now, instead of what the Canadian government used to give him. That's not what I meant. Yeah, those English weapons only shoot straight half the time. You know, that's probably why your son talks so much. If only my congregation could see me here in this wilderness, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Likes a Jack Craddock. It's all right, Reverend. I understand. First time you've seen me, looked like you'd seen a snake in your boot. I thought you were a ruffian, and I realized the ruffian was also the marshal. Yeah, well, the two do go hand in hand real nice, don't you think? <laughs> Jack! Clive has been shot! McPherson has a gun on him! Take it, McPherson was none too keen on the news. I'll get my medical bag. Take me with you. I don't think that's a good idea, Reverend. Just get away from here, Corporal. You'll not touch my cattle. You hear me? Angus, don't shoot. Get back. All of you. Look, my person, don't do that again. I don't mind you shooting at Bennett here, but when you take to aiming at me and Marie, I draw the line. Angus, you have to listen to the marshal. He doesn't mean it. Put your gun down, Craddock. I'm trying to reason with him. Yeah, well, it don't seem to be working there, Clive. My jurisdiction, we are going to do it my way. Yeah, you're so set in your ways. I wonder who you learned that from. Please, get him out of here. It's not safe. Let's go, Reverend. McPherson, I'm putting down my gun. I mean you no harm. I want to help you. We all do. He's frightened, Corporal. Please help him. There's two more in there we gotta deal with. <laughs> Clive. We're gonna have to burn the barn down, too. That's why I want you to leave here. Neighbors shooting neighbors. You could have been killed. It's my duty. No. You have another duty. No. My duty is here, to help these people, to protect them. What about your family? What about me? You just want me to come back to Toronto. Be a feather in your cap, wouldn't it? Father, I do not want to follow in your footsteps. These people need me. Not your parishioners in Toronto. I have purpose here. I'm not leaving.
Say, Clive, your father was telling me he's got to get back to Toronto right away. He's leaving tomorrow? Yeah, but he'll be back. He hasn't won yet. That's too bad. He's giving a service for the McPhersons tomorrow before he goes. I'm looking forward to hearing him preach. Well, you enjoy it, Jack. I've had enough of his sermons. You know, I ain't figured out which one of you is the more stubborn. Why don't you mind your own business? Look, the man just wants what he thinks best for his son, Clive. You can't hold that against him. Look, you don't know anything about it. And how would you? You've never had to live up to anyone's expectation of you. Yeah, I know that, Bennett. That's why you're the lucky one. See, my father walked out on me. It's too bad you're choosing to walk out on yours. Let us sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but My friends, we have gathered to share in a tragedy which has befallen a young family. They have had to abandon their cattle and their barn so that you all will be safe. The offering from this service will be given to them. Please give straight from your heart. I would like to read from Luke. A certain man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And the younger son took a journey to a faraway land, where there he wasted all that his father had given him. But when the son returned, he was not spurned, but was forgiven. When the family asked the father why he embraced the son, he said, we should make merry and be glad, for my son was lost and now is found. My son lives here with you people, and I doubt he will return to me. Yet he is not lost, a good, strong man doing the work of the Lord, not as I would do it, but as he has chosen to. I have found him here, and I am proud of him. I don't think I've heard you in finer voice, Father. Now the Lord speaks through me, son. But the sentiment was mine. Thank you. I've always thought highly of you, Clive. And I've seen you're a fine guardian of this community. Perhaps I should be satisfied with that. I hope so. I'll 
only regret is that it's taken us so long to get to here. Driver, mind if I go along the ways? The marshal was right. I doubt there's a finer looking doctor in the Dominion. Jack Craddock, watch out for my boy. I'll do that, sir. And remember, if he doesn't respond when you move your bishop, you've got it. You know what surprised me? Yeah, what's that? How well you got along with my father. Yeah, a thought had crossed my mind. Your move. It was good to see him. He'll never be convinced that I should be out here, but it's not what he wants. Uh-huh. He called just move his little queenie here of mine. But at least he won't force me anymore. Thirty years old, and he's finally letting me make my own decisions. Both of you are like two peas in a pod, Bennett, you know that? Each thinking you know what's best for every living, breathing soul on the face of this earth. I do not. So I give you a little advice every once in a while. Once in a while? Hmm. I'd have to say that you're in checkmate there, Clive, old partner. What? You know, this chess ain't too much different than being in the army. Let's have another game. No, nah, I don't think so. I'm plumb worn down by that last battle. He taught you that move, didn't he? Didn't he? <sighs> Wouldn't go blaming others for uh, your own stupidity, Clyde. Get your foot off my desk. 